guys, well Pat's in here from Break Designs and here is a new tutorial. Sorry for all the inactivity and stuff like that. Um, basically I've been quite busy lately so I haven't been able to put any uh, videos up. But there will be more, I will upload two more this week to whatever sort of video you want. But make sure you click that subscribe button because we're going to be going into a lot of depth within Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, but today we're going to start off with a very easy um, tutorial but not a lot of people use the technique that I use and it is a very easy one. Now a lot of people create stuff like this within Photoshop clouds and stuff and this is basically just a group of paths, uh, just a stroke around it, a thick stroke uh, and no fill and this gives us the sort of icon of a cloud so it's a really fun tutorial to do. And we're just going to use basic shapes. And the idea of this is to show you how to use the Pathfinder options, Unite, and also the Shape Builder tool, um, which is a very commonly unknown tool to some people who start on Illustrator. But if you're a graphic designer, or if you're just sort of looking for a bit of fun on Illustrator, then the Shape Builder tool is one for you. So we're going to create this today. So go to a new document by pressing Command and N or Control N on the PC, and press OK. All the options there are fine. I did mine at 500 by 500 pixel. Um, radius. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up here to the left and we're going to choose this rounded rectangle tool. Now if we press Alt and click we'll get this diagram, or sorry not diagram, but this rounded rectangle dialog box and this is going to be a place where we need to go for this. So we need to to get the, um, the baseline of the cloud uh, because we're only going to be using three shapes for this um, tutorial. So to get the baseline of the cloud we need we need a corner radius of 100 pixels. What this means is that you'll get um, a very rounded rectangle, as you can see. And this rounded rectangle uh, will enable you to have sort of the illusion that it's a lot of, um, it's a very sort of circular sausage, per se, if you know what I'm saying. Um, something is wrong, but whatever. So we're going to use this at a corner radius of 100 and press OK. You will get this, but then you can delete it and then draw another one. But I'm going to just change my uh, stroke and fill attributions um, just like that so I've only got a black fill and I'm just going to draw out a rounded rectangle like so Maybe about this big doesn't matter if it's not perfect but there we go so there we have it I just press V to get to my move tool uh, right so here we have the baseline of it now what we need is a circle just one circle and we're going to draw it quite big just like so and then I'm just going to make it go down like this to draw the circle, by the way, if you're wondering, um, I just press L to get to the ellipse tool because that's a shortcut for the ellipse tool. Uh, and then I hold down Shift and Alt to constrain. Shift constrains it, otherwise you'd be making this weird circle. Uh, so Shift constrains it and Alt makes it sort of transform from the middle of where your cursor was. So it makes it easier so it's not just floating all around the place. So just like that. I'm going to make this smaller by pressing V to get to my move tool and then shift and alt again to constrain it and to keep it in the same uh, picture just down a bit and then we're going to move it up a bit so to whatever you're liking really and we're going to place this circle on top of the cloud here like so and this is basically two separate um, paths uh, with fills in it so that's what we're at now so we'll just keep like this put this up to however you want we're then going to hold down Alt and move the circle and you'll when you hold down Alt and move it you'll get this sort of on the cursor uh, the double cursor one with a white arrow on it and that means that you're ready to copy the circle that you're using I uh, just press command Z to get off that and what that what I did then was I basically just copied that circle over here and I'm just going to transform it again I'm just going to move it down quite far down and this is a very cartoony uh, cloud and then we can move this to where we want, make it bigger, make it smaller, to however we like it, like so, and I'm not going to do mine too great, because I'm very picky when it comes to designs, so that looks great to me. Now what we have here is three separate paths, and you can see this here, and there's ways in which we can merge these all together to make one path. The first way is if you highlight them all, uh, you can come down to the shape modes here and press this one, and if you hover over it, it says unite. Um, and when we press it, it unites all those shapes together in one because they're overlapping and this makes it so it's one shape I'm just going to press command Z to get off that to show you a different way the other way is if you um, drag and hold them all down like so um, and highlight them, if you press shift and M or if you just go up to here and click on the uh, shape builder tool um, and 
this basically allows us to build the shape to how we want. So say I wanted this to come down here and build with that way. So this is just one circle now. This is a whole one circle and this is uh, building the shape and you can sort of drag it, making sure your fill is at black or the color you want it to be after you've selected it. And basically you can just do this and that will build the shape for you. So it's literally building shapes together. Now this is one shape and that's basically the end of the tutorial. But if you'd like to know how to make it a bit more funky, then stick around. I'm just going to go and align this. So I'm going very quick because it's only supposed to be a quick tutorial, but we're just going to make it a bit bigger for myself, like so, by pressing Shift and Alt. And then I'm going to highlight it again. I'm going to press uh, Shift, I'm going to hold down Shift and press X. What that will do is that will swap these swatches together. I'll do it again, like so. So this will swap the fill, the black fill, to the black uh, to the empty stroke and now the fill is empty but the stroke is black and now you can see I've got a path option there or so some paths there that are very thin uh, but with no fill in the center of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these paths uh, a lot bigger the stroke and I'm just going to go up to the weight and I'm just going to bump it up to however I want now you can see that looks all right but the problem is we have these massive weird path joints here now this is, you can get rid of these and make them rounded by coming up to the stroke, uh, analog, uh, sorry, the stroke window, if I can speak, up here. And to get this stroke window, you can just go to window, down, and then find stroke, which is here, or press command or control F10. So when we're here, I'm going to go and go to the corner, and I'm going to choose this rounded joint, and that gives it a, a rounded joint so it's not poking. And that makes it more circular, and that helps it give the illusion of a cloud. Uh, so there we are, just like so. So the corner, rounded. So now we have the cloud there. What we have in the other one here is we have this sort of path coming here to give it some depth or to give it a sort of reflection type feel to make it look rounder or more like a cloud. It's very cartoony but we'll do it, we'll do it anyway. So what I do is I grab the pen tool by pressing P or going up to here and then I'm going to literally just click one point there click another point here and I'm going to do a video on the pen tool later but anyway just listen to this uh, so click that and I'm just going to make a sort of a round joint it doesn't really matter at the moment and then let go press V and the problem is is that this is square and this one is not this one's circular so the way to uh, stop this or the way to modify it to make it a more circular ending is to go up to the cap options here just above the corner options and we're going to choose what's called the round cap because right now it's at a butt cap, which is hilarious. Um, so we'll go to the round cap, press over there, and then we're going to just change it a bit. But by doing this, we're going to hold down, we're just going to press A. I'm going to select one of the anchor points, these little dots here. And I'm just going to hold down the anchor and I'm just going to press the handle so it looks a bit better. Like so, a bit more rounded, a bit less rounded, to however you want. And then I'm going to go and change this by highlighting it and then going to the weight. I'm just going to put the weight down a tiny bit. That's a bit too much. So I'll just bring it up to about seven. And there we go. So when we highlight them, we can press Command G, which will group them all together into one sub layer, just like this. And then I'm just going to align it to the canvas. And that is literally it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the tutorial, uh, subscribe and give me a like or whatever comment on what you think is better to use actually I'd like to do this so if you comment what do you prefer if you already know how to do this do you use a path uh, finder by using the unite tool just down here or do you use the shape builder tool for stuff like this let me know if this helped what other videos I can do stuff like that thank you for being awesome goodbye <laughs>